Is this you? How about your food service personnel? What are your current policies on thermometer calibration? How can you be sure your HACCP temperature checks are accurate? Hi, I'm Tim from Thermoworks, the nation's leading supplier of professional temperature tools. And over the next few minutes, I'd like to walk you through a couple of important details about ice baths you may never have considered. Let's revisit our well-intentioned food service employee. Mr. iPod may not know it, but he's putting everyone in his organization at risk. An improperly made calibration ice bath can lead to a thermometer that's off by as much as 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Every measurement this guy takes with that thermometer is now guaranteed to be inaccurate. And food safety temperatures, let alone health inspectors, don't leave room for improvisation. Secret number one, make an ice bath wrong and you're better off not calibrating at all. To prove our point, we wandered over to Thermoworks' very own NIST Traceable Calibration Lab to speak with Amber, our technical services manager. Hi, Amber. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Great. Good. So what's your most accurate meter here in the calibration lab? That would be our Fluke 1595A super thermometer. This one Has right here. Has an accuracy up to 0 0.000015 degrees Celsius. So how many zeros were after the decimal point and That's before the four. one? Four zero. So actually, the uncertainty is to the right of the display here. Right. That's pretty accurate. It is pretty accurate. And you, to find a more accurate thermometer, you probably have to go to the National Standards Lab. But wow. we've got a high-performance RTD probe hooked up here. We've got the coefficients entered into the thermometer, and we're ready to go. Let's find out what's really happening in our glass of icy Coke, shall we? Let's do it. Not even close. Then again, let's take a look at a glass of ice water. This is a regular glass of ice water. We added cold water to a pile of ice. Should be about 32 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Let's take a look. Look at that, more than seven degrees off. That means that if you calibrated your food service thermometers using this glass of ice water, all of your subsequent measurements would be at least seven degrees off. Instead of a food safe 35 degree target for your meat, you'd be at a bacteria-ready 42 degrees. Think that would make a difference? Which leads us to secret number two. A glass of ice water is not an ice bath. So if this glass of ice water isn't an ice bath, what is? Same ingredients, ice and water, but a different result. When it comes to making a proper ice bath, it's all about keeping an adequate ice to water ratio. 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or zero degrees Celsius, is called the ice point because it is the point at which ice melts into water and water freezes into ice. At the ice point, changes in energy are converted into changes in the phase of water rather than into an increase of temperature. At the ice point, a loss of heat results in more water freezing, while any heat gained just melts more of the ice. Of course, the ice point of water is also affected by atmospheric pressure and is only at precisely 32 degrees Fahrenheit at very low pressure. These factors are accounted for in the lab, but for purposes of field calibration, a properly made ice bath is always well within a few hundredths of a degree and suitable for calibration. But it has to be made properly. Secret number three. To be sure you have the right ice to water ratio throughout your ice bath, keep ice on the bottom of the glass. When water is free of ice, increases in energy, say from the heat in this room conducted through the side of the glass, are converted into an increase in temperature. That's why it's so important to keep ice from floating up off the bottom of your glass when you make your ice bath. This used to be our properly made ice bath, but we let it sit long enough that the water has overcome the ice slurry at the bottom of the glass. The temperature has already begun to rise. That's also why one of the cardinal rules of ice baths is to keep your probe sensor up off the bottom of the glass. Secret number four, stir your probe in the center of the ice slurry to get an accurate reading. Placing the probe in the center of the ice slurry keeps us away from the warmer bottom and sides of the glass. And stirring the probe keeps the sensor from resting against an ice cube, which will affect your reading with these faster, more accurate digitals. So now we've created a proper ice bath. Look at this thing of beauty. We've stirred our probe to take our reading. This thermometer reads 32.5 degrees. Time to adjust, right? Not so fast. Secret number five. Don't adjust a thermometer that is reading within the manufacturer's accuracy specifications. 
Thermometers don't actually measure temperature directly. They calculate temperature by measuring the changes in other physical properties like electrical resistance, voltage, the expansion of metals or liquids. These changes occur predictably over the temperature scale, but the conversion tables are not typically linear. For greater accuracy, a specific thermometer can be calibrated precisely to the coefficients of a specific temperature in the lab, but a temperature being field calibrated at the ice point will give readings with slightly greater or lesser accuracy across a range of temperatures depending upon the specific temperature. That's why quality thermometer manufacturers publish accuracy specifications with their thermometers. This Thermoworks Thermapen is accurate to plus or minus 0.7 degrees Fahrenheit from negative 58 all the way up to 392 degrees Fahrenheit. So if my ice bath test produces a result of 31.7 degrees, I should leave it alone. Adjusting to remove that additional 0.3 degrees Fahrenheit may actually make it less accurate at other temperatures. Don't forget, if it's an electronic thermometer and it's within spec, don't adjust. Now that you've learned the five secrets, it's time to put what you've learned into practice. So here's how to make a proper ice bath in four easy steps. Step one, fill a large glass to the very top with ice. Crushed ice is preferred, but not required. Step two, slowly add very cold water until the water reaches about one half inch or one centimeter below the top of the ice. Pour off any excess water. Step three, gently stir the ice mixture and let it sit for a minute or two. Step four, insert the probe of the thermometer being tested about two inches or five centimeters into the ice mixture and gently stir while you take your reading. If you have any questions about ice baths or calibration or thermometers or really anything to do with temperature and how it affects food safety in your facility, don't hesitate to contact one of our helpful thermal workers. You can count on Thermalworks, not only for quality professional temperature tools, but also for the expertise and information you need to be successful. Until next time, I'm Tim from Thermalworks, signing off.